How's everyone doing? Today I have another random bag of movies right here. Thumbnail face. I don't know if I can get that all in there, but there you go. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them and which one of these is your favorite. I've got a big box set over there too, which you obviously just saw. And you guys seem to like these random bags of movies. Uh, and I think it's kind of fun too. A lot of these movies are ones that came... Uh, they were essentially in storage. They're over at my parents' place, and I've been recently, little by little, getting them from there and bringing them to my place to finally come home to their proper home in their collection. Uh, I've used my parents' place for storage over there, for uh, in my, my old room over there, for years now, and I'm finally getting everything out of there. I don't know if I have any... There might be like one or two things left there now. Uh, so pretty much everything is cleared out. So these videos, they're going to be a thing of the past now, Teardrop. Uh, but this is a big amount right here. I think there's 17 uh, Blu-rays, DVDs. So let's go ahead and go through them. Let's, little by little. Uh, first up, I'll show the one big box set. Uh, I have some Blu-rays in here too, but the big box set is a DVD. It's an old DVD uh, set. Well, not really a set. It's just a big box uh, special edition from Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers used to do a lot of these different sets. I think they had VHS ones too. But uh, I had a bunch of the DVD ones, and I thought they were really cool for a while, but then I realized they took up so much room because they're huge. Like, compared to, if I can find a DVD, uh, well, I'll just show you a Blu-ray. <clears throat> but you can see the size comparison right there, and uh, it is, you know, massive. But this is for um, a perfect, uh, The Perfect Storm, which I thought was a very thrilling movie. Uh, and some of these ones, by the way, could be autographed in here. Uh, and this one is one of those ones. There's, I have a few more of these. I got rid of a bunch of them, but I still have a few more left. Uh, but this one is really, I, I kind of, I'm going to keep this one because uh, of the autograph. But it slides out like this. And I'll go ahead and show you. Here is the autograph version. Each one would have a film cell in here. Uh, but this one is signed by George Clooney, and it's limited to, uh, this. I, I don't know if all the signed ones were limited to uh, 1,500. Uh, but this one was limited to 1,500, and it's number 426. So he signed a lot of them. But there's the film cell and then the picture. You can actually frame this up. It could look nice. Uh, if you're a big George Clooney fan, big fan of the film. I don't know. I, I like the film a lot, and I think George Clooney's a good actor. But I don't know how I would feel about framing this up and putting it. Maybe I will. It is nice and, you know, to get his autograph. It, you know, it's probably worth something. Um, and again, I think he's very talented. So I remember he started way back in the day. He was, it was a return to horror high. Like he was in like golden girls back in the day. <laughs> I remember watching that when I was a kid. Hey, we all, we all watched some stuff like that back when we were younger. Um, still fun. I don't care. You know, <laughs> who's your favorite golden girl? Blanche? Come on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think it's pretty cool. Actually, there's a, I don't think all of them were autographed, uh, or chances to get autographs up in there. Um, I, I know there was another one that I had back in the day that was autographed. I don't think I have any more, but George Clooney autographed, Perfect Storm. Uh, this is the Deluxe Collector Set. That's what they were called right there. And uh, it has, you know, a bunch of other stuff in here. What is this? Uh, you know, oh, some real high class, you know, high glossy, uh, high class glossy fixtures. But a whole bunch of pictures from uh, the movie and stuff in here, a bunch like that. And then we got some like lobby cards sealed up in here, a bunch of those. And then we got a poster for the movie, just a really big, you know, theatrical size poster, which, you know, why not? Let's, let's do it. Let's unfold this bad boy. And yeah, it is, it's massive. So it can't even fit all the way in here. Theatrical size again. But that is uh, pretty cool. And then on the bottom in here in the little inlay, you've got the Snapper Case DVD. They went all out for this deluxe edition. But yeah, I used to, these Snapper Cases, I hated these Snapper Cases. Especially if they had like security stickers. Because back in the day, like all the movies had like a security sticker here, a security sticker here, a security sticker there. And a lot of times with a Snapper Case, because it isn't like a, a plastic a uh, case like that around it, it would be right onto the paper, and sometimes it would rip the paper uh, from the snapper case right there. But there we go. Nice kind of like felt inlay, but uh, it is a, a nice addition. Um, it has the poster if you're a big fan and all the lobby cards and uh, glossy photos, but 
this is really what you came here for, getting that autograph. I don't know if it was like a percentage chance to get the autograph or what, but I think that's pretty cool. And I do like the movie a lot. I actually, I want to revisit the movie now. It's been a while, but uh, really great, thrilling kind of survival uh, aspect. The, and uh, I don't know, it gives you kind of an insight into like the fishermen, you know, dealing with all that kind of craziness too. And the, you know, natural disaster kind of aspect to it with a big storm. It's been a while, but uh, let's get into the Blu-rays now. Uh, I've got a few Blu-rays. Most of these, I think, were I think they're all blockbuster uh, ones that I picked up. Especially like I used to go to Blockbuster all the time and get like you know they, they would have the deals. It was like four for twenty Blu-rays, which was a big deal. You go up and get all the ones that they had. Now you look back, a lot of those Blu-rays you can find at the Dollar Tree and stuff. I actually I don't say it. it's weird though. The Dollar Tree has some like um, you know big blockbuster movies and then some really obscure ones too so you can't really say for sure but it's interesting to see you know I remember when blockbuster went out they had dollar blu-rays I was just, I hoarded up grabbed as many as I could and it's funny I remember going there one time this guy had like boxes of them I was like you should put a limit like I feel like that's unfair he just cleaned them out essentially left just like the crumbs uh, but yeah I, I got there too late sometimes but I went to on my local blockbuster, I was able to get a few ones, and uh, I remember thinking, dollar Blu-rays, this is crazy, and now, you know, Dollar Tree has them, so maybe, again, not the same ones, but still, I think it's it's interesting to see the world we live in. I'm still going to be physical media over streaming any day, uh, but Love Happens, which actually surprised me. I feel like they oversold the love aspect here. I feel like this movie is more about grief and dealing with like the loss of loved ones. Uh, like the main guy here, Aaron Eckhart, he is an author and it's like A-OK, -okay, uh, basically helping people get over grief. And he's dealing with his own issues of grief that he really hasn't fully overcome and dealt with. Um, so he basically, you know, he sees Jennifer Anderson in his hotel when he's, you know, doing a seminar there. And at first she brushes him off because uh, she's in a relationship with this guy who, I guess was cheating on her and then you know they ended up uh you know have a budding romance and they go out a couple times they don't really you know it's not overwhelming and that's the thing that i appreciate i'm not a big romance movie fan and that's the thing that i liked about it but i felt like it kind of uh oversells you know love happens the title the the picture right there it makes it seem like it's gonna be one of those really overly schmaltzy kind of romance movies and it's not uh, a lot of it is dealing with the grief and him just getting back into the dating game and, uh, you know, they don't really get too schmaltzy until the very end. But by that point, uh, it's a range of emotions. And I felt that it had a lot of emotional honesty. And I definitely appreciate it. Good supporting cast here, too. Uh, Dan Fogler, Judy Greer, uh, John Carroll Lynch, Martin Sheen. Um, there's some really nice scenes. It takes place in Seattle, too. And uh, that is uh, some great establishing shots, too. You know, uh, Mount Rainier and just going into uh, the forest and the woods there. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it had some good uh, comedic elements and just felt like it had some uh, emotional honesty. And I like the dealing with the grief aspect. So it definitely, uh, I feel like a lot of people who are going into this were probably going to be a little bit uh, depressed watching certain scenes of this. Because again, a lot of people dealing with grief and loss of their loved ones and some of the stories that you hear, uh, it's, it's really rough. And Seattle is a big part of this too. Uh, not just, you know, seeing Seattle, but some of the music as well. Uh, some of the different musical artists that they use, but uh, I actually really enjoy this one. There's certain little things too, like she uh, she has like a floral business and she writes these little words in the hotel behind paintings uh, that you know are kind of more obscure words, and I, I love that little aspect. It's like little things that make this movie stand out a little bit more. Uh, so I thought it was uh, much better than I was expecting. This is one that I could definitely sit through again, so I'm going to keep this one in the collection. Uh, but I feel like, you know, when a girl says, I want to watch a romance movie or rom-com, and I put this one on, it's going to be some depressing times to get to the payoff of that aspect. But it's a give and take. we got to have some compromise. If you want a romance movie, you're going to have to deal with some depression, uh, depressing stuff in there, too. Come on, work with me. <laughs> I love depressing movies. I don't know. Just I feel like the emotional honesty of it. And this is one that also I think is kind of depressing. Uh, but I love this movie. Although I, the ending is such a cop-out. Uh, the director right here... Uh, I'm trying to find out who the director is. It's, uh, tsh, come on, tell me these small words. Uh, it's uh, Brian Kopelman. Come on, Brian Kopelman. Uh, grow a pair. That ending was such a cop out. You can't lead up, tease up to that and just leave it like that. I hate the ending. Hate, hate, hate the ending. And I, it makes me want to just smack the director. <laughs> just like, what are you doing? Come on. Uh, but I love the movie overall. And this is one that I think is a really depressing movie. At some level, I can kind of relate to certain aspects of it. Uh, I don't know, when I was, uh, you know, especially when I was younger, I uh, just, uh, you know, uh, 
ba basically I'll, I'll tell the story about it uh it's michael uh, douglas who is married and um has a daughter jenna fisher and um he's married to uh susan sarandon who looked really good in this movie <laughs> uh, by the way fyi uh, great supporting cast overall dan devito emma jean poots uh mary louise parker jesse eisenberg but anyway so he's married and he's this big uh car salesman in like tri-state area uh really big in new york new jersey and he goes to the doctor and the doctor says you know i feel like there's something wrong with your heart i need you to go get tested and that freaks him out he's afraid he might you know end up uh having uh, a real issue where he might die soon so it kind of is a life-changing event and he decides to you know start uh, he goes out to the bar hooks up with a chick and starts cheating all the time and basically lives his life uh to the fullest like there's no tomorrow and basically especially when it comes to women and he's just picking up women left and right and you know uh so it ruins his marriage and then he also ends up uh kind of scamming on the the car uh dealership that he had uh, his whole line right there so he loses that and uh he is you know is starts off with you know he's divorced now and he's seeing this new girl who can really help him out and she uh basically sets everything up where he can get this new dealership and everything and start over uh, and, uh, he basically is told to bring Imogene Poots, who I, you know, I think she's like, uh, 18 during, so I'm hoping, uh, I can't remember the exact age, but she's, uh, going to college, and, uh, he's basically showing her around campus because he has ties to the dean, and, uh, during that trip, they hook up, and then she tells her, uh, mother, and ruin, it ruins his life, and so he has to, you know, from all the way from the top, being rich and famous, to now, uh, working it with Dan DeVito, who was his college friend, and like a, uh, like a, deli sub shop pizza place kind of thing on the college campus uh and it's just uh him getting a chance for redemption but also you know he can't really you know come to terms and deal with things he's still trying to hook up with all these young chicks and uh you know he takes kind of jesse eisenberg under his wing because he kind of sees himself in him uh when he was younger you know he didn't know how to approach women uh he's trying to help him you know find his girl and stuff like that and uh, there's some really heartwarming moments, some really funny moments in here. It's some ridiculous stuff, too, but it's a fun time. Uh, for me, I thought it was, you know, again, certain things were relatable. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's just uh, something that had a lot of depressing moments, but, again, a lot of emotional honesty, which I really enjoyed. But I hated the ending. Hated the ending so much. Uh, it's such a cop-out. You don't know which direction, what he's going to do, and it just, come on, you got to you know i feel like it's unfair to the viewer you've led up to this whole point brought through his journey and you're just going to do it that way i, I just hate that so freaking much uh yeah so uh, some good um audio commentary right here with uh i guess maybe it was this co-directed it said it's uh here um uh, commentary with writer director brian copelman and directed uh and director D uh, david livian and actor douglas mcgrath uh, so yeah, I guess it was, uh, written by, uh, one person and directed by two people. So both of you, both two directors, you couldn't, both of you, your balls didn't drop. Come, I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, come on. I felt like that was such a cop out. I hated the ending so much, but I love the movie overall. Um, and Michael Douglas was great in that role. He brought a lot of, uh, vulnerability to the character. Just the whole cast really shined here. Great supporting cast. Next up is Extraordinary Measures. And again, a lot of people, uh, weren't aware like when you went to blockbuster and you saw them in like these kind of cases you can take this paper slip out and put it into a regular blu-ray case and you'll never know that it came from blockbuster a lot of people were i remember for years people were saying oh i'm not gonna buy from blockbuster it comes in those cases so you can take the paper slip out put it in a blu-ray case and that answers that um but yeah some people were weird about there's some interior artwork for this one extraordinary measures um with brendan frazier harrison ford and carrie russell carrie russell remember when she was on felicity i wasn't a big fan but I feel like she got way better with age. I think she is stunning. I really loved uh, the TV show uh, Ameri Americans, which was such an underrated Cold War spy era show. Uh, such an amazing one. But I have not seen this one yet. Uh, Brendan Fraser. I'm not a big Brendan Fraser fan at all. I remember recently I watched a ton of his movies, especially like older movies. Uh, Encino Man, which uh, I don't know how Polly Shorby got a career. I don't know how he got a career from that. Uh, Journey to the Center of Earth, I wasn't a fan uh there was a few other ones bedazzled which oh my gosh how was that a thing that movie was horrendous all the gags were so cringy uh elizabeth hurley i feel like was doing her best to make that a watchable film she was stunning she was great uh it was really only the best part of it there's but oh my gosh he was awful in the movie and it was so rough to sit through the part where he's a basketball player there's so many the jokes were just awful to me 
Um, but maybe it's because we were like, maybe some people have nostalgia factors with it. I don't know. But then I watched uh, The Passion of Darkly Noon, which that director, immediately when I was watching, I didn't realize who the director was. I was watching the film. I was like, this reminds me so much of Reflecting Skin. It's the same director that did Reflecting Skin. He also the leader did a movie called Heartless, which I think is actually kind of a good uh, underrated, like almost uh, kind of fairy tale horror, if you will, little aspects of it. Um, but yeah, so uh, Reflecting Skin is a super bleak, creepy, bizarre, uh, surreal movie. And same thing with um, Passion of Darkly Noon, kind of dealing with like, America and like uh, that kind of traditional values, but really just kind of twisted as well. And when I was watching it, the way that it was shot and just everything about it, it's like it reminds me so much of Reflecting Skin. I remember pausing it and looking up and I was like, yup, same director, uh, super twisted and weird. And Heartless, I felt like it was so different. There's a couple little things here and there. Cause I wanted, I think he wanted to make another film uh, with Viggo Mortensen in there again. He's in his first couple films. Uh, and then it just never happened. And then, uh, cause those ones were shot in America. Actually, I don't, they were, they were, they took place in America. The Passion Darkling, I think was shot in maybe in Germany or something in the woods there. Um, but anyways, uh, Heartless was actually uh, shot in the UK and set in the UK where he's from, the director. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Brandon Fraser, he was in that movie, which is a really crazy dark role where you have like religious fanaticism in it and just uh, Ashley Judd, Viva Mortensen in there too. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Let's get back to this one. Extraordinary Measures, uh, inspired by a true story, Harrison Ford in here. Uh, and yeah, The Mummy was the only thing I thought he was ever any good at. I've seen tons of movies with him in it, but I was just, I watched a bunch at once with him and I was just like, he's awful. <laughs> I just wasn't a fan. The Mummy 1 and 2 were good. Uh, besides that, it's just, uh, I, I'm not a fan of his acting. Uh, and yeah, sometimes I feel like you don't necessarily have to be a good actor. You can have good screen presence. Like there's certain, like Kevin Costner, I don't know if I really consider him necessarily a great actor, but he's got great screen presence. In my opinion, I felt like the same thing about John Wayne. I don't think he was a great actor. He just had great screen presence. He was great in those roles. Just, you know, the way that he presented, he was, you know, the cowboy, you know what I mean? Duke. But uh, anyways, <laughs> Brandon Frazier, not a fan outside of the two mummy films uh, from everything I've seen of men. But basically, um, I assume it's his daughter who has some disease. He's trying to find a cure. And Harrison Ford is a reclusive doctor. He's trying to get him on board. The fight against time, fight against the, the medical uh, establishment to find the cure and uh, you know Carrie Russell I guess is the wife and she's I'll, I'll watch anything that she's in she's amazing I do like Harrison Ford as an actor as well uh, Barney's version which this is based off of a book uh, and it's basically his life uh, and how he meets the love of his life at his wedding but it's not his wife uh, and uh, so it's Paul Giamatti, uh, Rosamund Pike, Minnie Driver, uh, Rochelle Leverfer, Scott Speedman, and Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman is the father. And it's funny because when I first saw it, Dustin Hoffman, Paul Giamatti, they look like they could be like the same age. Uh, Paul Giamatti, he looks like he's had some rough times in his life. Come on, look at Paul Giamatti right there. And then look at like Dustin Hoffman. Like they look like they could be brothers, you know? <laughs> Uh, but Dustin Hoffman is the father and uh, it's basically, you know, their best friends essentially too. And it's just him going over his life, uh, confessing, you know, th spans over three decades and two continents and his three different wives. Um, so just his life. And uh, this is a Sony Pictures Classics release, which I got from Blockbuster again. That paper insert can come out and you put it in a Blu-ray case. Next up is No Reservations. It was kind of like a double feature uh, romance uh, fest right there with Aaron Eckhart as the lead. I don't, I'm not a big Aaron Eckhart fan. I didn't like him in this one, uh, but I did like, well, I, I liked his character, but I don't know. I, I definitely liked him better in this one. I guess I like the movie way better. Uh, this movie was I don't know, generic to me. It just felt, I think if you like romance movies, you'll like this movie. There's nothing too new here. It's very basic. Uh, I, uh, Catherine Sager Jones, I think is attractive, but I felt like her character was just flat. There was, there wasn't enough depth. Like, you know, she's has some issues with relationships, but in the beginning she's going through therapy. She's this famous chef. And she can't deal well with, you know, or people saying, you know, uh, you didn't make this right, even though she did make it right. But, you you know, the customer's always right kind of thing. But she goes uh, off the handle a few times. And basically, he's another chef that is uh, starting to work with her. And he basically, you know, changes her life. And uh, uh, this, I was her name, this uh, Abigail Breslin is in here. Her sister passes away and she has to raise her little niece. And she doesn't know how to do that. And, uh, you know, kind of they clash a bit. And uh, she's not, she's not really into any kind of romance or relationships or anything like that. So she's very hesitant to dealing with him, but he's really happy, upbeat, uh, and 
you know, he kind of forces his way in there and uh, there's they have a bit of a falling out. It's it's very formulaic and then you know how it ends and uh, he's like, I'm gonna move to California to California and get my own restaurant and she comes back to like, you know, I'm, please, I'm sitting here, don't move. You know how it's gonna go. It's if you like romance movies, you'll like it. To me, this was super flat, super generic, super formulaic, uh, and it just—I don't—I feel like it says on the back they had crackling with screen chemistry. I didn't feel the chemistry at all. Um, and I just felt like the characters were just so hollow. Uh, I don't know. I just—I needed more from it, so much more. But again, if I think this is right up the alley for fans of romance, and I wanted more from the. I like a lot of movies that have, uh, you know, dealing with uh, food and stuff like that, passion, creativity with food. It had elements of that there, but I wanted more. It was, it, it, I could have been more bearable for me if it dealt more with the food aspect. You know, I'm a fat kid, you know, come on. <laughs> uh, next up is the One Miss Call Trilogy, which if anybody's interested in buying this or trading for it, this is the DVD set, let me know. I have the Blu-ray set now, but there you go. The original... Started by Takashi Miike. Let me know what your favorite Takashi Miike uh, film is. I, Audition or uh, Itchy the Killer probably for me, but he has like over a hundred films. Uh, next up is Rushmore, which this is the Criterion DVD. And I remember way back in the day, I didn't know what Criterion Collection was, but when I first started collecting DVDs, like, you know, they had The Rock and Armageddon were on the Criterion line, so it was a little weary. Uh, but now I feel like they, they won me over. Back in the day, like, there was periods where... I, I was uh, introduced to so many films because of the Criterion Collection. It's uh, a company or uh, it says right on the back, it'll say a continuing series of important classic and contemporary films. Uh, and Rushmore, I actually want to upgrade this one from Wes Anderson. Let me know what your favorite Wes Anderson movie is. Uh, I feel like he uses a lot of the same characters, you know, Bill Murray, Jason Schwartzman, uh, the Wilsons, uh, especially Owen Wilson. But uh, yeah, let me know what your favorite Wes Anderson movie is. Uh, I want to revisit this one, but I want to upgrade this to Blu-ray. So I'm going to get rid of this DVD of it. But I remember this has a ton of special features right there. Uh, Jason Schwartzman uh, is, I think he's like a high schooler. I don't know if he's like a, like a prep school or what. And he meets Bill Murray and they both kind of fall in love with this teacher and just how ridiculous it is, uh, how quirky it is, the soundtrack. It's, you know, typical Wes Anderson. Uh, then you have this map right here. Uh, the World of Max Fisher, a map of Rushmore. So I think that's pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure the Blu-ray has this as well. So I definitely want to upgrade uh, the chapter insert right there. Uh, I want to get the Blu-ray for this. But there you go. And then Margot at the Wedding, which is a Noah Baumbach film. I was watching this and I was didn't know Noah Baumbach directed. And I was like, this is reminds me so much of Noah Baumbach. And I, I paused it and it was directed by Noah Baumbach. When you start to watch a lot of films, you start to see certain... You know ways that the director their style um so I, I i'm not a noah bombach fan there's only like two movies i like from him marriage story is my easily his uh his best film his magnus opus if you will uh but he has a lot of fans but oh my gosh this movie was just insufferable to sit through all the characters i hated them loathsome each scene got worse for me each scene was like so terrible so I guess, you know, I get it. There's uh, a lot of dysfunctional families out there, but this has to be one of the most dysfunctional, dysfunctional families out there. Jack Black is in here. Uh, John Turturro, who I wish he was in the film more. He's in there for just a short period. Je uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, Nicole Kidman. Uh, those are the big leads. And then uh, the kid right there, uh, he's the, the, the son of uh, Nicole Kidman. Margot is her name. So he's, she's going to... Uh, her sister's wedding jennifer jason lee is going to marry jack black and uh just how dysfunctional they all are as a family they talk about you know their mother and their sister there this scene right here where they talk about what happened to her sister like how can you laugh at that like it's just so absurd so ridiculous each scene gets worse with how ridiculous and how awful these characters are um i cannot stand this movie if you like noah bombach you'll probably enjoy this though i feel like all of his films like have a very similar theme there's only uh just really super depressing super uh you know dysfunctional families kicking and screaming i don't remember so much. that was like might have been his first movie but that one was i feel like it was like college age more and kind of dealing with drama like that or just getting out of college um but yeah all the rest of the film so many dysfunctional aspects of the characters but this to me was just insufferable to sit through i like uh the establishing shots 
you know, going back to the family house, the big tree, um, seeing like the woods and stuff like that. But besides that, just the characters were so, nobody talks like that. Nobody acts like that. Especially, you know, I get it. You know, your family could have a black sheep. Your family could have some dysfunctional people, but not every single person in the family being just the worst type of people. Um, I, I hated this movie so much. I would burn this movie uh, <laughs> and light it on fire if, uh, you know, uh, but uh, I'm not going to because I know there's going to be fans out there. So if you are a fan, let me know. We can do a trade or something like that for it. Margo at the wedding. Noah Bombach fans, that's for you. Uh, just It's not for me. Let me know what your favorite Noah Bombach film is. I know there's a lot of people that love. Uh, Greenberg was another one with Ben Stiller. He works uh, a lot with Ben Stiller too. Uh, he is another one that works with like a, an auteur. You can definitely tell his style. Wes Anderson, um, Noah Baumbach, a few of the other people, uh, directors like that. They have their own very distinct style. And uh, they work with a lot of the same actors and stuff like that. But oh my gosh, insufferable to sit through, in my opinion. I, so miserable with that. everything about it. The, the end scene too. You Come on, you're just going to leave your stuff. and like I, So many things about that movie just angers me. Uh, next up is one. That is a very different film. Uh, two can play that game. It's it's basically told from uh, the perspective of Vivica Fox, who is stunning. Uh, and it was great to see her get this lead. She's been around for so long for her to get this this uh, lead role like this. This came out uh, 2001. And I like the cast in here too. Bobby Brown's in here. Uh, Gabrielle Union, who's so, so freaking stunning. Uh, Morris Chestnuts. Uh, there's so many other people in here and I'm trying to find, they don't list everybody, Anthony Anderson, uh, but there's so many people in here, uh, that have been around for a long time. It's great to see him. Monique is in here. <laughs> she kind of ruined her career from what I heard. She made it just like super difficult to work with. She wanted a lot of money after Precious. I thought it was, honestly, I think she's a great actress and deserves, uh, but I feel like, you know, from what I've heard stories, she wanted so much money. She was so difficult to work with, but, uh, Precious, I think she deserved, uh, some awards for that role and I think she's actually a really great actress she plays these kind of typical stereotypical roles in this one uh, which she's done in so many films but when she plays a role like that she can really show her acting chops and I thought she's I think she's an amazing actress when, when it's a really uh, pivotal you know emotional role like that she reaches these heights that I feel like a lot of actresses can't reach a uh, very intense performance uh, but basically this one right here two can play that game uh vivica fox is uh, you know she's um in the corporate world and she's helping her girlfriends out with uh their you know philandering uh significant others boyfriends husbands stuff like that and she's basically telling them the steps to get their man back and get their life back in order their romance back in order and she's dating morris chestnut who's also in the like, kind of a corporate world and uh, one night he calls and says, you know, uh, dinner's off for tonight, I gotta work late. And then she goes out to the club with her girlfriends and she sees him there dancing with another girl. So she starts, you know, playing that game of like different rules to do, you know, cut him off communication wise, don't talk to him for a few days, play these little mind games and it kind of backfires on her and they kind of go back and forth. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a romance movie, it's formulaic, uh, but I like the way that it's told from the perspective of her. And this is from a first time director, uh, written and directed by Mark Brown, uh, and I thought he did a good job with these characters. I think he let them all kind of shine, the different actors, uh, and Bobby Brown, <laughs> hilarious in his role, uh, but Anthony Anderson too, and uh, I thought it was, a, it was a fun movie. It's a, you know, it's very formulaic, very predictable, but I liked the cast a lot, and I liked how the roles played out. Uh, and you know, it, it's a, you know, battle of the sexes, uh, rom-com, but I thought it was a fun time. Uh, I enjoyed that one. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's the best, but I like the actors involved and, uh, it was one that I enjoyed. There's some really funny, ridiculous moments and Gabriel Union. Oh my, mind-blowingly stunning. Uh, she's been in, breaking all the rules is a rom-com movie that is so freaking underrated. It's her and Jamie Foxx, a bunch of other recognizable people too, but breaking all the rules. Check that movie out if you like rom-coms, uh, and like different, you know, uh, Gabriel Union, Jamie Foxx, especially, they're the leads. But Morse Chestnut's in that too, I believe. Yeah, he's like the best friend in there. But that movie's so freaking good. Rom com, if you like it. I'm not into those usually, but that's a really good one. Uh, next up is A Gift Horse, which I have never seen. Uh, and it has uh, John Schneider from uh, Dukes of Hazard. I remember when I was a kid living in Germany. Uh, my mom was real excited to meet Tom Wolpat. And I think she got her uh, his autograph on like an album of uh because he apparently sung as well and i remember years later he got in trouble for like 
all kinds of like drug possession. I think he got stopped for like a, a bunch of weed at the airport one time. He got arrested for that. And I remember she was so disheartened by that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I remember, you know, uh, I think I don't think my dad was happy that she uh, met Tom Wolpat and got his autograph. It was some kind of like a signing, an in-store signing thing. And, uh, you know, because I think, you know, my mom liked him. and But everybody has like a celebrity crush kind of thing. And uh, Dukes of Hazzard was a huge show back in the day. But I just remember that being funny. We were, you know, living in Germany at the time. And I guess he was doing some kind of tour, you know, uh, in-store signing, stuff like that. But yeah, anyways, uh, John Schneider was in this one. And uh, I haven't seen this one. I guess, uh, you know, uh, there's a ranch uh, owned by a business tycoon and a neighboring horse ranch. And uh, there's a, uh, I guess a, they challenge each other, another, the other rancher and, you know, dealing with horses and stuff like that. And I don't know, this one doesn't really seem like for me. I think this is, I, this is one that was, uh, might have been like a review copy, actually. Like, uh, I remember way back in the day when I first started getting into reviewing stuff, uh, you, you know, certain companies would ask you, would you want to review this, want to review that? And you'd say yes, but then they would keep sending you stuff. And I don't remember ever requesting this. Uh, this is one of those family approved ones. This is from Vision Films. I'm not too familiar with them. So I don't I don't think this is something I would have requested in general. It doesn't look like my kind of movie. But I don't know. Obviously, this is a family movie. If you like horses and stuff like that and ranches and that kind of lifestyle, you'll probably enjoy it. Um, I don't. That's not for me. Uh, um, I, sh I shouldn't say that. Sometimes you go into a movie, you think that, and it turns out to be a movie you end up really enjoying. Uh, Five Star Day with uh, Cam Gigandet, which I am not a fan of him uh, as an actor. I'm just, I, don't, I feel like maybe it's because a lot of the roles he plays, he plays like kind of like a the douchey kind of guy, douchebag, and uh, I feel like he's too convincing in that role. I just end up hating him. Jen Malone's in here too. Uh, it's basically uh, a horoscope predicts he's supposed to have a five day, uh, five-star day in the morning of his birthday i guess his world turns upside down all these different things happen um so yeah i guess it's kind of he, he's on his journey to uh, disprove astrology and i guess it's kind of like a romance aspect in here too um haven't seen that one all right let's get into some more of these let's get the rest out of this bag this is a quality bag by the way shop right bag is that what it was a stop and shop which let's you're probably competitive. You're probably mad at me for that. But yeah, Stop and Shop. This is a, a real quality, strong bag. I'm going to keep that bag. Um, Invasion TV series, the complete series right here, which I've never seen this. I think I picked this up on somebody's recommendation. Uh, but there's a hurricane. Eve slams into uh, Homestead, Florida. And then afterwards, you know, everybody's you know dealing with destroyed uh, homes and lives and putting their lives back together and trying to band together as a community. But apparently uh, there could be some extraterrestrials pretending to be humans. I think that's the concept here you know, uh, the invasion aspect. And it's a really good cast in here too. Uh, William uh, Feitner, um, Tyler Labine, uh, right there from Tucker and Dale versus Evil, which he's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, but that's, I feel like, one of his most popular roles. I need to revisit that one. I remember not being the biggest fan of that. It's, you know, horror comedy aspect, but it's like way over the top with it. And just a lot of, you know, tropes. And I remember not really, enjoy I feel like I'm like the only person that didn't enjoy it. So I'm gonna give that one another watch. But I do like him as an actor. Um, but yeah, there you go. That seems to be the theme here. And it's 907 minutes. So it's something around like 15 hours of this. Uh, but I've heard good things. So maybe it's time to finally check this out. This is maybe like the perfect time to sit down and watch something like this. Uh, let me know if you've seen this one. And let me know of like underrated TV shows that you think are worth checking out. It's kind of like, a, it seems like an Invasion of the Body Snatchers uh, kind of uh, drama-esque series. Uh, next up is Tales from the Crypt, seasons one, two, and three. I know there's like a big box set, and uh, I need to get the rest of them. Uh, I really want to, I think it's season five that has uh, vampires in Alaska, which I always thought was an amazing concept. 30 Days of Night is one of my all time favorite movies, and uh, I always felt like there should have been more, uh, you know, movies with that. And that was like the first one that I saw utilizing, you know, in uh, a place that has 30 Days of Night like that, where vampires can really. You know, take advantage of that. Uh, I think more movies should utilize that. I know there's one like Frostbitten. Uh, I can't remember if it was Norwegian or Swedish. One of the, you know one of those areas over there um, where it has that too. Not nearly as good as Thirty Days a Night. And then the sequel Thirty Days a Night was terrible. Um, but yeah, that was the first thing I think that had that. I think it was season five that had that. Uh, but yeah, I grew up on this as a kid. So super happy to have uh, these ones. I want to complete the series. I feel like uh, I don't know the box set. I feel like I already have half of it right here, essentially, you know, so I, I should just get the rest of these single seasons like this. 
I don't know, I think they're like 10 bucks a pop these seasons. But uh, Tales from the Crypt, the complete first season, second season, and third season, The Crypt Keeper. Let me know if you have a favorite episode. Let me know if you watched Tales from the Crypt as a kid. Let me know what your favorite horror TV show is, horror series. But, you know, they come in these kind of like digipack style releases right there, which I love the artwork. Um, and you have the interior artwork, which is super cool, too. I, I definitely appreciate that. So I remember, like, you know, watching these sneaking downstairs. I think they're on on the weekends and stuff. Um, my parents would not let me watch horror movies, but I would sneak downstairs all the time as a kid and uh, watch them. And I remember when I, like, seven years old when I first watched uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and I just loved it. Uh, and that kind of hooked me. Even though it gave me, like, nightmares, I was hooked. Even, you know, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, that was another early one that I watched. I remember it freaking me out as a kid. Now I think it's just so goofy and ridiculous, but I still love the heck out of that one. So there you go, Tales from the Crypt series one, two, and three, or seasons one, two, and three, and there's some back parts, and I actually like, there's like a, some embossing on there too, so you can, you know, feel the Crypt Keeper's, Crypt Keeper's face and hands and stuff like that, I think that's pretty cool, the title too, kind of like the EC style look right there, EC comic style back in the day, but uh, that's awesome to have these back in my collection, next up is 30 Rock, uh, Seasons one through three in Norme. I don't, is this like an uh, um, Canadian one or is this part of the show? I remember, I love the show, but I don't remember the in Norme if that's a thing. But it doesn't look like it's Canadian because I would assume, uh, you know, sometimes the Canadian releases will have like a French writing on the back, but that doesn't have that. This box is pretty beat up, but it's seasons one through three. And actually, I'm going to get rid of this. So if anybody's interested in buying this or doing a trade for it, let me know because I just got the Mill Creek Blu ray complete collection. But it comes in the. These digipack designs right here, Ooh, kind of like a foily effect. There's the outer slipcase. You get a little bit of the New York City in there. Uh, if you can see that, that's pretty neat, actually. I like that. Little added touches makes things stand out. But yeah, there you go. The special features too. So I gotta check to see if the Mill Creek uh, release has the special features. That's actually key. I do love this show. I'm not a Tracy Morgan fan. I got to see his stand up live in my local comedy club, Stress Factory Comedy Club in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Shout out to them. Great club great comedians over the years but i remember seeing him i remember uh, i had a date and we ended up getting there late and i hate getting there late because you can't find a good seat so we were uh seated all the way right next to the green room and he came out he was wasted and he smelled like bob marley and uh him and his like entourage came out and the entourage were like hitting on these girls the next table over and he just sat down at our table uh and just started talking to us and just saying like random crazy things and we're like, oh, okay, cool. We're just kind of going with it. And we thought it was kind of a cool experience for him to sit down like that and talk to us. And uh, then he got up on stage and he was so wasted. He was like messing up uh, the club owner's name and uh, calling me a different name. And then he was just so raunchy. Like every other word was a curse word. And he was talking about like STDs and stuff. And just, just like, it was so cringy. And it was just like an uncomfortable, some uncomfortable laughter. And he just kept every other word. And I just think that's, it's too forced. It's, I don't think that's really funny for me where every other word is a curse word and just, you know, talking about a lot of like, you know, sexual stuff, STDs and stuff like that. It just, I don't it just didn't work for me. I feel like that's his whole shtick. I just never thought he was that funny. Uh, but he he's great in this role. He essentially plays himself and just so ridiculous and absurd. Judah Freelander, I've seen him a few times stand up uh, comedy live and he's great. I love him. A lot of great uh, crowd interaction. But everybody played their parts so well. Uh, Tina Fey, uh, Alec Baldwin. Uh, but I love this series. Um, the digipack design right here folds out there you go and so that's pretty cool but uh, i now i have the complete series on blu-ray i just got to check to see if it has the special feature so if anybody's interested in uh i like that kind of foily effect right there on i don't know do they all have that no that uh that's kind of a jip so this one season one right here kind of has like a foily effect you can see it in the background and none of the other ones have that how can you, you're jipping me. You, you show me this one. Ooh, it's shiny. It's nice. And then the other ones don't have that. What a jip. But uh, it's an awesome series. I love it. It's hilarious. Um, and it's, it's a, I, you know, to me, this is one I can always watch. I remember there's certain series, whenever it comes on, I, it's on TV, I'll sit down and watch the episodes. It's kind of like this, like The Office too. Uh, I like Parks and Rec a lot, but to me, this was way better than Parks and Rec. Uh, Community too, I like this way better than Community. Um, very happy that uh, Mill Creek released this on blu-ray they've released so many great um series on blu-ray now so they're doing an amazing job they've come a long way i remember back in the day they were like you know budget stuff uh, a lot of uh you know just uh, public domain releases too box set things like that and uh, their packaging was rough terrible i remember complaining so many stacked discs sleeves paper sleeves 
but now they've come a long way. Some really great releases packaging wise, design wise. Then they have the retro VHS slip covers for the Blu-rays. Love that. Uh, some, some great releases on TV series. They're doing an amazing job. I kind of feel like they're head and shoulders above a lot, especially for like TV show releases. Oh, so good. But uh, hoping that the release has the special features on this. Looks like it has a bunch of bonus features on this set right here. But I think I'm probably going to get rid of this anyways um, because, I don't know, I like having the Blu-ray of it. And uh, there you go. So if you're interested, let me know if you want that Norm. Am I just like missing? I don't remember the Norm. If that was, it had to be part of the thing because it doesn't look like it's uh, Canadian releases. It looks like they're legitimate U.S. releases. Uh, not to say that Canadian releases aren't legitimate, but uh, you know, usually you'll see like the French uh, writing on there too, though, the English and French writing, but it doesn't have that. But there you go. Let me know if you've seen any of these. Uh, I think it was 17 titles in total. Uh, do you guys remember these big giant deluxe box sets from Warner Brothers? They did a bunch of these. I think they look nice, but they're, they're huge. They're enormous right there, if you will. But you can see the box set wise, you know. But yeah, this is much taller. It takes a lot more room. But I do like having the autograph on there. I don't know. Should I frame that George Clooney? Auto it's it's cool to get his autograph for sure. Um, and I do think. Let me know what your favorite George Clooney movie is as well. I definitely want to revisit this one. It's been a while. But I remember like Fisherman and The Big Storm and just a lot of thrilling and dramatic aspects. And you know the families too. Um, John C. Riley was in here. You know a bunch of recognizable people were in this. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I definitely now that I have this again, I want to revisit it and uh, you know check it out in its entirety. And I want to see this these old snapper cases. Do you remember these DVD snapper cases? Uh, yeah, Mark Wahlberg's in here too. I remember having like you know that Boston. Um, this was I was it based on a true story too. Uh, yeah, October 1991. Uh, but yeah, it's supposed to be the greatest storm in recorded history. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know, it, it had that dramatic effect. I felt like you really were invested in the characters. I remember that's one thing, it, it felt like they had a real natural chemistry, them kind of like they're back and forth with each other, the dialogue. Diane Lane's in here, William uh, Feitner, who was also in the Invasion show, Karen Allen, uh, a bunch of recognizable people in here. Uh, John C. Riley is in here. I was like looking, at the, did I make that up in my mind? He was in here. It's been a long time, but, uh, and I just remember that being so thrilling, the climax of this. Um, so really happy to have this back in the collection. Can't wait to, uh, watch that. I, I might watch that, uh, either tonight or tomorrow, but I kind of want to get into that invasion, uh, TV show, which I've heard good things about. And, uh, now I have it again. Uh, let me know, uh, if you've seen any of these movies, what you think of them, which one of them is your favorite. Let me know what I should watch first out of all these too. Uh, some of the ones I have watched recently, uh, some of the ones I've talked about a little bit more in depth. Margo at the wedding too can play that game. No reservations. Uh, Solitary Man and uh, Love Happens, which I enjoy this one. I was really surprised. It's not as schmaltzy as the title and as that main picture makes it out to be. But uh, there you go. Let me know what you think of these. And sadly, there's not going to be too many more of these random bag bags of movies uh, videos. Uh, so you know, I remember before I used to do those uh, random uh, red box of mystery things from Fox, which Fox, you know, now Disney owns them, so there's going to be no more of that. So Double sadness, no more uh, random bags of movies. And ah, but this is a long video. I'm, I apologize for that. 43 minutes now. Thank you for staying with me if, to the end of this video. If you did, leave me a comment and uh, let me know that you stayed to the end of this video. I, uh, I appreciate it if you did. You know, thank you so much for you. You, you hung in there with me. Uh, but thank you for all the support on here over all these years. I still have fun making videos, and that's why I continue to do it. I love that interaction, talking movies with you guys. Uh, I think it's awesome. This is a great outlet to do so. Um, so thank you so much. You guys rock. I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.